to the next episode. Um, I'm here, Nichelle, and we got Hey there, Denisha's here. Woo woo, we in here, and Mo will be tuning in later. Um, is this Mo? Oh no, it's not Mo. Okay, so yeah, Mo will be tuning in later. Um, just to let you all know, we are now on Twitter, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, and we are now on iTunes. So check us out. Woo-hoo. Yeah, so that's new for you, D. I didn't tell you that. We just got onto iTunes oh, yeah. a couple days ago. So we in there. Yay. We official. So, um, okay, so I'm sorry, my phone is going off. Let me turn it over. All right, so we are official now. So, um, like always, if you're tuning in, um, there are spoilers. There are going to be spoilers today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, American Gods, um, Handmaiden's Tale. Um, I've been watching uh, the new episodes of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and this new series that is on uh, Amazon Prime called, I Love Dick, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and also The Keepers. This has been the talk of like everything for the past, like since it came out Wendy, Saturday? Saturday or Sunday, yeah. Yeah, that has been on fire, on fire. So I think we're gonna save that one for last because I think we got a lot to say about that. Mm -hmm. So D, so what you been watching D? I've been watching uh, Handmaidens or rewatching Handmaidens. One of my girlfriends was watching it, so watching her response to it. Um, American Gods and The Keepers. Mm-hmm. I think that's everything. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been uh, been watching. American Gods. I am really digging the visuals of it. Yes. As I'm watching, I'm really wishing I was like in a movie theater watching it on like the big screen. Yeah, I feel like my TV doesn't really give it justice. Um, but the visuals, a plus, all across the board. The visual, the visuals, and the bodies. <laughs> and the yeah, Shadow is pretty easy on the eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's very easy on the eyes. Yeah, but I was question questioning his uh, culture slash nationality for a second. I was like, wait, what? I had oh, to look yeah. him up too because it kind of looked like blackface right. a little bit. <laughs> That's <laughs> the big thought because I, 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 the whole time I just thought he was a, a white guy or you know Irish or whatever until um. Uh, I, I, I'll call him Thor because that's who he reminds me of. But the guy with the hammer, mm-hmm. until he um, called them black or something, I was like, "Wait, wait, what? Huh?" Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my god, please don't tell me you have this white guy playing blackface." And then I looked him up. I was like, "Okay, he's kind of brown." Yeah, so I think he's his. He's probably half and half. His dad is Jamaican. His mom's probably English. Um, okay. The makeup on him, like the, I don't know if it's like the makeup they put on him or if it's like the the lighting, however they have the lighting set. It gives him like a very, because uh, his features are very keen. He has very white features, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Very white features. But then he has like this dark skin, which kind of doesn't look like authentic dark skin. You know what I'm saying? It looks like it's been tanned. It doesn't look like yeah. it's natural. It looks yeah. like tanned or not, not even... Well, maybe a little spray tan, but spray tan and bed tan, and I'm like, this don't look natural yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. But that's his skin color. Like when I looked him up, I was like, that's dude. Like he looks the same in every picture. Some of them he looks even sexier, and I'm like, hey, I need to check whatever the other pieces you've been acting in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But visually, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's what a lot of people are saying, and I feel the same way as you. Like my TV isn't all that. I guess I could watch it on another television in this house that's much bigger, but when I binge, I'm in the bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My TV is a pretty decent size, but I just, um, I don't have uh, HD. My TV's not HD, okay. so maybe that makes a big difference on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's just, I don't know, the colors. I just feel as if, if I was in the movie theater, it would, like, really come to life, the visual. Yeah. But, yeah. Beautiful. In this last episode I watched, I was like, oh, which I had some questions on, but we'll do yeah. it. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, I don't know if I'm, I, I think I'm pretty critical of a lot of stuff because I watch a lot of TV, a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of good stuff, a lot of good TV, a lot of good movies. Um, I wish I wish the storyline kind of matched the visuals. 
Like, I kind of feel like the storyline's a little thin. Yeah. yeah okay. That, it leads us to try to, to try to figure it out or... Mm-hmm. I feel like, is it, well, there, there is a book. So I guess for the book readers, it's perfect. But for us who didn't, we're just like, okay, I guess I'm just supposed to know all of this. Like, mm-hmm. how does this work? Yeah. It, it, leaves me, it leaves me asking a whole bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. But hopefully it'll come together. Because I'm wondering if his, if his wife is a god. Is she a god? Because she died and she came back to life. And no, she's saving. Thing, like, did she come back to life because of the coin? But I don't know. Like it's, it's like she was pulled by whatever force. And I'm like, is that because of the coin? But I don't know if that makes sense because the coin, she was gone when um, the leprechaun came to get his coin. So I'm like, I don't know unless the coin was on her. Mm-hmm. And he pulled her back. I, I don't know. I'm like, I know the um, Anubis said, when you're finished doing this task that you have to do, I'm taking you back. Mm-hmm. It's time. It'll be time for you to finally die. But I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't know if she's a god, but she has some superpowers. Yeah, she does. Her arm got chopped off and she just kept walking. I'm like, all right. Right, because she already <laughs> zombie. Right, she gonna try to sew it back on. I was like, sweetie, if this works, <laughs> right, you gonna need some heavier thread, I think. <laughs> right, but when she, she when she popped up, when that best friend, well, that ex best friend, I guess, popped up, I was like, oh boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, so I'm gonna continue to, to tune in. It's probably not as exciting as I thought it was gonna be, but I'm I'm gonna continue to watch just to see how it plays out. I don't know how many episodes is it. You know, I don't know. I don't. I do not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll look into it. But yeah, so it's still on my radar. Not high on my radio, but it's it's still up there. Yeah, it's like when nothing else is on, and I don't feel like getting too deep in something where I have to pay a lot of attention to. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, let me turn this on. Or when mm-hmm. I see the alert come up, I'm like, oh, I'll watch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I have, um, so we're, you're all caught up on Handmaiden's Tale. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fully. One of my friends said he couldn't watch it. He said it was just entirely too slow for him. And I was like, I feel you. I, and it is very slow. Like, the, you know, every episode is so slow, but you kind of just want to know mm-hmm. what happens. You want to follow her. But, yeah, a lot of this can have been condensed where we are now into, like, two episodes already. Yeah. hmm Yeah. It definitely still has my attention. That, um, the lead actor, um, she is so phenomenal in her acting. What's I, her name? I, from Man Men, Men, right? Yeah, the um yeah. from Mad Men's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta catch her. She was she was she is man, she's a phenomenal actress because she is like really carrying this, you know, she she's very um she acts very well with her face. Yes, and she needs to because most of it we're reading her thoughts. Mm-hmm. Her thoughts, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm really curious to see how this relationship with her and the commander is going to pan out. Cause it seems as if he's, he's getting a little bit more personal with her. Cause when they were having, um, I hate c- calling and having sex. Cause that's not really what it is. Ceremony. The ceremony. There you go. Mm-hmm. When they were doing the ceremony, he was getting a little, uh, frisky with her in front of his yeah. wife. Like he was feeling on her leg. It was, it was very minor, very, right. sweet, but you know, but he made it clear, like, you are just here to, to serve a purpose. I'm just trying to get close to you so I can finally do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you think it's, it's still... I mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think he can really perform well without the personal touch, you know. Gotcha. I don't say personal touch, but without the connection. Mm-hmm. Because when she went off on him, he was like, look, you're here to do a job. What did he say? Um... Whatever it was, she kept repeating it when she walked out and she got sick. Hmm. Uh, something about it, it was basically saying life isn't fair, but you know, for it, what he said, we were it was um what we're doing is for the greater good, but for the greater good doesn't mean for everyone or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had to catch that line. Cause, yeah. Yeah. That's oh, what really made oh. us sick. So the end of last week's episode, 
is uh -huh. that I didn't watch this week is when she met the man that knows her husband. Did you catch that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wait, but they were coming from Mexico. Yeah, so I, I don't I don't know how. I'm like, did he sneak off? Did he make it to Mexico? Did he sneak out and get to Mexico? Or mm -hmm. did somebody else know him? Or is this a trap? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I was shocked to see that the, um, I guess the president was Mexico, was Mexican, was a woman. And I yeah. was like, oh, yes, this is going to be great. Yeah, she's going to be like, no, screw this. But it was like, oh, no, this is wonderful for our country. I'm like, no. Yeah. That kind of threw me off because she, when they were standing in line, all the um, the handmaidens, and they were, she was like something about oranges. And the girl was like, uh, they're not training oranges, girl. They're training us, the idiot. Right. <laughs> I was like, no, y'all training the handmaidens. No. I was like, all right, well. Yeah. We see where this is going, dummies. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm very curious how this is gonna. How this is gonna go. Yeah, this is. This is. This one is high on my radar. Even though I forget, I forgot to watch it this week. This that one's high on my radar. Um, mm -hmm. so I have also been watching the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Have you ever seen that? No, but I know of him. You know, like I've seen him on like different clips on social media, but I I actually watched the clip today. With him singing uh, the song from Under the Sea. Who, Titus Burris? Yes, Titus. Yes. This, the first two seasons, do you have to watch it? The, at least the first two season, seasons. Okay. It is like crying, laughing. It is so, I don't know who was writing. I think um, the chick from SNL, um, Tina Fey, she's producing Okay. It. Yeah. Okay. So the first two seasons, hilarious. Titus, I met him actually um, last year around my birthday. I went to go see Emily King perform, and he was there. I almost lost my mind because this dude is hilarious. He he yeah. makes me show, in my opinion. He is funny. I like his lemonade uh, parody. Mm hmm. His 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 comedic timing and just like his little nuances. I don't know if he's like that in real life, um, but these mm -hmm. little nuances that he does and these faces, he's like. Perfect for this role. Absolutely perfect. He is right. hilarious. I love him so much. All right, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah. So the the, the second, the third season, eh, it's not as good. It's still good. It still has like these little funny moments. Um, but it's it's not as it doesn't have the same genius as the first two seasons. Okay. Yeah. So I think maybe there. It seems like they're trying to be funny. Where before it seemed like it was like a natural kind of thing. Mm. So, so yeah, but. Anyway, watching that, and also I am watching this show called "I Love Dick," which is so, yeah, I gotta, I've seen it. I've not seen it, but I've seen it fly by. People talk about it, but I'm like, I still don't know. Like, is this a, a guy named Dick, or is it is it an oxymoron? Is it a parody? Like, yeah. Okay, so this is this is what it is. So it's two writers. It's a husband and a wife. One is a um, she's a screenwriter. I think he her husband writes books. And so Kevin Bacon is a famous author and he has like this retreat where he invites different writers to come and they stay for a while. And mm -hmm. so they're on a road trip. The husband and wife are on a road trip to drop the husband off to this retreat. And then the wife is going to fly over to Europe because her movie is in, um, the movie she wrote is in um, some sort of um, film festival. Okay. So they get to this place and which I forget the name of it, some like little remote stupid town mm -hmm. and they drop her. The film festival drops her so she can't go out there. So she's there. So Dick is actually Kevin Bacon. She's in love with okay. him. So that's and Kevin Bacon is a great, good, funny, great actor. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's where like, the whole I love Dick comes from because she loves him and she's so freaking weird. This chick is so weird. It's hilarious. It's stuff that she does. You're looking at her like, someone's got to call the police on you because you're like a stalkerish kind of weird. Uh -huh. And this is her husband? Well, she's there with her husband, but she's very, she's almost kind of like obsessed with Kevin Bacon's character, Dick. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she uses like whatever stuff that her husband is doing, like she's using that, like whatever he's writing to get closer to Dick. And she had <laughs> meetings with him, and she's like, "It's it's so weird. She's so weird, but she she's like perfect for this role because it's it calls for like a very weird kind of person, look mm -hmm. crazy personality. But 
I suggest you watch it. It's hilarious. I think I'm on episode like three. I'll check it out. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's funny. So that's all I have been well, watching. We got stuff coming up, so I don't know. Cause we got what do we have coming up June twentieth? Queen Sugar. Queen Sugar, man. Oh well, I got time. That's that's two three weeks. I got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah you definitely got time. You definitely got time. I can't wait for that to come back. Woo. No. Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Me too, mm-hmm. me too. So, what else have you been watching? Um, what did I say? That, not much because I've been traveling. So, I saw The, the Keepers, mm-hmm. um, Handmaidens, um, The Keepers, Handmaidens, and American Gods. That's it. In American guys, yeah. I haven't even been watching the news, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the keepers. My God. It's making my skin crawl. Oh my gosh! Every time I think like this can't be getting this can't get any more it's disgusting and vile, it does. It gets more disgusting and more vile. Right. Oh my gosh. Uh, my <laughs> friend Kia said. Uh, stop snitching started in Baltimore in the 60s, but it wasn't about us, it was about them. Are you? It was about the no, but she was saying, you know, jokingly, you know, but you know, after watching the keepers, mm-hmm. she was like, you know, like that stop snitching, that no snitching, don't snitch was really the police, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they were the ones that was not snitching. Oh my gosh, it's so corrupt, it's just a mess. I'm like, I cannot, it's oh my god. It's like layers. It's it it really was a child sex ring. Yeah. They were passing these girls around like like these priests, the police officers, the businessmen, the, the doctor, like every like Yes. Oh, it's just sickening. Like this is not okay. Not at all. And and I'm um, in the school, I those nuns knew they know. Most, yeah. Well, some of them didn't know, but yeah, they had an idea. The nurse knew. The school nurse knew. The school nurse knew. Yeah. Enough people knew. Enough people. Yeah. But they were scared, I guess, because he was so connected. Oh, my mm. God. And now we see what they were scared of, but apparently because Kathy ended up dead. Mm hmm. Unbelievable. Like, oh, my gosh. The episode, I think it's episode five or six, where the guy said he actually, he was like, I saw wh- whomever's vagina. And so they kept talking. She was, he was, the interviewer was like, so you saw like a, a photo of it? He was like, no, the, the woman's vagina was in some newspaper. Yeah, they wrapped it up in the news. I, but the, I'm like, this is crazy. Sorry, I heard something. That's why I was like, what? Um, <laughs> That was crazy. I was like, wait, for who, wh- and how, how did they even, like, did they take it off of her body? Were they passing it around? Like, what was the reason for them to dismember her body? Like, mm-hmm. Man. And then to wrap it up in newspaper, or was it even hers? Was it just some other stuff, and they were just doing that to, you know, to make him talk, and it didn't work, but. Yeah, mm-hmm. It was just yeah. all their tactics were just a mess. It, so, are you at, you're at episode seven, at the final episode? I'm, I'm in the, the middle of episode seven, but you can talk. You can talk. I'm almost finished it. I'm just feeling like the, the whole, that, that letter with the sister, the card that she wrote her sister. Mm-hmm. That was so sad. I'm like, she will never know what the card said. Like everybody, it's, it's just so much cover up with all of this evidence, with all of the paperwork. It's just, mm-hmm. I even think at this point, the FBI is in on it. You know the interview that really pissed me off. I really wanted to like jump through the TV. The one with Sharon May. Oh she, my god, I see her in the street. Oh, and and it, it's not even the fact that she covered it up because that's it's her attitude. She was so matter of fact about it, and so snarky about it. Right, like well, you know, if I had the evidence with her nasty accent and I have a Baltimore Yeah, accent. I was like, I was trying yeah, to I I where is she from? She doesn't doesn't have a Baltimore accent. She has a she has a South Baltimore accent. South so Baltimore accent. They have different dialects. Mm-hmm. So she has the um see you down the ocean, hon. She has that accent. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> she has the down the ocean and um, what's the other one? water? The sink. She has that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I call it the Fran Dresser, but like, and I know the different. You can tell that you know if you're from there, you can tell the different dialects. But mm-hmm. oh my gosh, she just. Yeah, she was just so she matter of fact. Girl. Yeah, she's. I don't know how the evidence. I mean, we would have prosecuted, but I didn't see anything. But everybody else sees all this stuff. They even have the the what they call the beast, the the the, the lead sheet of everything that was taken into evidence, and she's just like, no, mm-hmm. it wasn't enough. And I'm like, we didn't see any pictures. I know there were pictures. We, I everybody know there were pictures. This nasty creep. You know there were pictures. Mm-hmm. There were pictures. I mean, they said, okay, so no, I'm getting the article mixed up because I started Googling and reading the old news articles. Mm-hmm. So there was a news article where the guy that dropped the boxes into the hole. So the guy that had to dig the hole, mm-hmm. Masco told him to dig it, dig it, I think 12 by 13 feet. Mm-hmm. Like this hole was huge and they came with three pickup trucks full of boxes. Mm. Mm. Like, oh my gosh. So, you know, when the homeboy left to go get another load of boxes, that's where the um, cemetery keeper jumped in to see what was in there. Mm -hmm. But I'm like three truckloads, pickup truckloads of boxes and nobody can find anything. Mm, I don't believe that. I don't. No way. They know where it is. They burned it or mm-hmm. did something with it to cover up or everybody that was included. And she's talking and she's starting the story off about when they were on their way to the grave to go dig up this stuff to find it. And she's like, you know, I, we were driving in my red Corvette. Like I'm, right. I'm like, uh, how disrespectful can you be? Right. How That is so disrespectful. Well, you know what it makes me think if the and the top was down, but they kept saying, okay, I just linked something because they were talking about there couldn't have been maggots. It was too cold. But mm-hmm. her top was down when she drove to pick up the body. She did say that. Yep. So it was warm. I mean, yes, it was only two months, but it was unseasonably warm, kind of like how it was this winter. But no, wasn't she on her way to go to go dig up the, the grave with all the... um. Those dogs. Oh, dig, dig up the evidence. Okay, and that was years yeah. later. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. That's what she wanted to go do. Yeah. Okay. But you know, I was thinking last night. I was watching this, and there was such a network of people who were involved in this. Like, how do you find people that are into this? Like, what what is the conversation? Right. That's what we were saying. Like, I mean, I guess you just the more you hang around people, you say something and you gauge their expression or their response. And then they just know, I I mean, I don't know, but I mean, you know, just reading different people talking about it online. It's just like, I guess that's how it works. I guess the same with like, when you're doing illicit drug activity, you just say something and see who flinches or who see who's like, Oh, for real. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Oh my God. It's, it's, did you, have you gotten to the part with the his with, well with what seems to be his very first victim? Um, possibly. What was the young, give me the some guy? The guy, the white guy. What? No. What? Yes, girl. This is an episode seven. Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. I'm gonna watch it, but go ahead. Oh my gosh, his very first one in 1967. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was reported if the archdiocese had done something, he would have never went on to molest all these people. Kathy wouldn't have been dead. But as soon as they reported it, he left. They transferred him to see well to arch um diocese. Well, Archbishop Ke- uh, Keo. Mm-hmm. So and you yeah, know, as soon as it was reported, and then they tried to bribe his mom, the little boy's mom. Girl, you when you see it, it's gonna make you even sicker because it was reported in 1967. Mm, 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 mm. This boy was in eighth, was eight years old. Oh gosh, eight years old or eighth grade? I don't remember, but I just remember the number eight. But I was just like, oh my god, this little boy was like, oh no, you won't. Mm-hmm. It says something and. The, his mother, he was like, and I know my mother went to say something because my mother is that kind of mother. Like, no, she went and said something. And that's when basically 
Masco like tried to blackmail him. He got him kicked off of all his little low league sports teams and everything. Mm -hmm. And then the mother did something. She was went down the archdiocese. Oh, because he was running around telling people stay away from Maskell, stay away from Maskell. And um, that's when Maskell kicked him off. Like he got him kicked off all his teams to be like, shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. And he got kicked off all the teams. He was like, oh no, you won't, and said something to his mother. And that's when the mother went to the diocese. So then the, somebody from the school called him and was like, you can get back on all the teams. Right. It's so you know, I I don't, you know. I don't really like talk about religion to people because you believe what you believe. Mm -hmm. I think it's just something that's it's it's really unnatural for people not to engage in sex. Yeah, it it to me it's just in in that unnatural because that is the the whole reason we're on this earth is essentially mm -hmm. the most basic reason for us to be on earth is to reproduce, Re procreate, yeah, to procreate. And so when you take that out, supposedly take that out, there those urges don't go away. But this is something nope. on another level though. This is this is something on this is something very vile and sick, you know. With target Right, because that's like the nuns and the priests, okay, y'all end up dating or mm -hmm. a priest ends up dating another woman or a, a nun ends up dating a man or a woman, whatever. But children like come on and they're just so violent. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh. The one of the victims, when you know she's telling her story, that you know it's like two priests in the room, and one is having sex with her, and one is like praying over her in Latin. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> like that's sick. I can't, I can't even imagine. I'm surprised she hasn't like gone crazy and just like bl blown up something. Well, the thing about it is she never recalled any of this to what? The 90s? Mm-hmm. 20 some years later? And that just tells me like what kind and I know he had a psychology background. Mm -hmm. He had a psychology background. So what was he doing to them outside of just the drugs or drugging them that mm -hmm. really had them suppressing this? Like he mm -hmm. this guy was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I re honestly think that guy, James, the uh, retired police officer, and even Edgar, I think he did something to them, too, because they really, truly don't recall. <laughs> like, you can see it. Like, they don't recall anything. Like, their whole brain is messed up. All the men that are associated with this, their brains are gone. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this man did something. He was so evil. He was... So evil. Yeah. So evil. And whole network, you just think how many victims there are out there in this network. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like his little circle, each individual person's circle, the the you know, like the, the doctor's circle, the mm -hmm. the police officer, like it's just sick. And like you said, for them to just be passing them around, it just makes it even worse. Like yeah. what broke my heart is the um one of the victims, you know I'm terrible with names. One of the victims was talking about the um when she was in um she was in the room. I think she was in the room with the two uh Maskell and the other priest. Mm -hmm. And the one of the priests said something to the effect of um I can't remember his wording verbatim, but really he was just saying, be careful because her family is very fertile. So don't. Oh, the, um, he, were, um, he said, stop, stop. Like basically told him not to have an orgasm, not to come inside of her. He said, stop. She's a pup of a litter of pups. Yep. That's what he said. And I was like, oh my. Yeah. Gosh. And then when she told that story and then she said, you know, I walked out of there and I can imagine they were just laughing. And then she just broke down, started crying. Like that broke my heart. Yeah, that got me because it was like she was just sitting there and then it hit her again. And I was like, she has to relive this every time. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Just, and it's like if you're in, in that community um, and, you know, the priests, you, you hold them to such high esteem. They do. Oh, mm -hmm. the one scene where the uh, the girl was like, she went into mass to confess something. She's telling the 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 priest what was going on. The one who 
I, I think her uncle was Uncle Ed. Mm-hmm. And he's mm-hmm. like, well, tell me what Uncle Ed did. And this motherfucker is jerking off while she's telling the story. Right, and used it to get her and like basically fed her story to Maskell so that he can go to her and use her as another victim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like she didn't realize he was jerking off during the initial confession. It was later in life when she had the recall. It was like, wait. He was in there jerking off while I was giving him my confession. Mm-hmm. I oh my <laughs> gosh. So if you're if you're one of these young girls who is involved in this and you see it's the priests are doing this and then you get raped by your uncle and then it's a police officer, like where do you go? Like you don't have anywhere to go. Right. You run. Right. You can't call the police because you already know they in on it. You don't know which one of them knows who. You just, like the one girl, the one lady, the one with the glasses, she said, um, she wanted to say something. The more it started coming out, she wanted to say something, but she was hearing people in her own family call the other victims whores and that they were trying to get money from the church. And she was like, how can I even say anything to my own family? I know it's true, but I can't say anything because I hear how they're talking about the other victims. Mm-hmm. Blame the victim. Eesh. And that's so common in this society. We so quick to find a reason to blame the victim, to make it their fault. Right. That, that, oh my God. I just want to keep just circling back to that Catholic church and how just it's, it's, it's like a mob. It, yeah, it is. When I, um, back when I was back living in Baltimore, right before I left, I was working at, um, a college there, a, a Catholic college, private mm-hmm. college. And that was like during the time where the whole, um, there was a scandal with, the, these priests, a lot of these priests were um, molesting these little boys. Mm. And you could hear a pen drop on campus. No one talked about it. And there are priests all around, like nobody talked about it. It was so weird. I always felt kind of weird being on a campus anyway, because that's not my religion. I'm not religious at all. And at that point, I was like researching like different types of religions and, and researching mm-hmm. like, you know, the, the origins of religions and the similarities from religions from way before Christianity and all that stuff. So I really wasn't into it. So like we were, they had mass there for, for certain ceremonies and they wanted us to go. And I think I went one time and that was it. I was like, you know, I'm here to get a paycheck. <laughs> right. I got all this extra stuff. I'm not here for it, but it's, it's very, first of all, with a lot of religions, it's very, um, I, I, I never can really say this word, uh, uh, patriarchy. That's mm-hmm. it, right? Patriarchal, yeah. 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 So that is in itself kind of rubs me the wrong way because we're so ingrained to, to think automatically when you think of God or the Supreme being or whatever, it's always a he, but who says mm-hmm. it's a he? Mm-mm. We don't right. know. No one on this earth has ever seen God. Right. So how do you even know right. what he or she or it looks like? Right. You personify something. I just think that religion kind of spawned out of trying to understand the unknown. Mm-hmm. And we personified it and, and, and made these people or whatever. But that's a whole right. other discussion. And these deities and these rules so that you can't do certain things. Exactly. Mm-hmm. To enforce you or to force you to do things and, and, and enforce it to the rules so that you don't do other things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly what I think. Oh so, um, the, um, Kub, the guy that was dating, I'm going to say dating, um, Kathy, his wife, she's Methodist and she was saying the same thing about Catholicism. Like she was like, I, I, it, it's very patriarchal. Anytime that you have to call your leader father, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but it was funny. I thought about that. I was like, yeah, they do call the leader father, but they call the women sister. Yeah, not mother. Well, mother. Right. Child. Yeah. Yeah, but it just seems almost now we're getting ancestral. Like, wait. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? But I guess there were some brothers, but yeah. I, I, it's just a mess. Yeah. That whole, that is... 
there's so many deep layers to that religion like that we i probably i will never understand never want to understand however that religion like really controls the world it, it yes. really like a mob yes from the from the vatican that that is the center, center of the of the world or at least mm -hmm. it was for a long time and i think it still controls a whole lot because that's where the money is i really hope that this documentary or series uncovers something or somebody I want to say uncover something, but at the same time, we know that there's so much power in that church that it'll probably just be like, well, oh, well. Mm -hmm. And they'll um, further push like there has to be a further push. There was a um, I can't remember which episode it was, but there was like this. Um, the owner of like this therapy office. Oh, oh, my God. Where they actually had like a whole program that was for these priests to come that were molesting these kids. It was for them to come and get, I guess, cured or therapy or whatever the hell it was supposed to be for. But he didn't even know that they were molesting kids. He was like, okay, I just all of a sudden had an influx of people from the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. and he, you know, he's, he's being told it's for depression or, or, you know, transition, all this stuff until that one priest was like, no, I had sex with a 14 year old. That's why. Can, can you fucking imagine someone coming in and saying that? What are you supposed to do? I, I'm calling the police. But then there's patient. What is it? Um, confidentiality. Yeah, so it's like, damn. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! But then he went and told them, if it, you you need to tell me what you're sending people for and give me their whole file, and then they stop sending priests. I said, that's a damn shit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And good for him. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be a part of that. Now look, luckily he ain't come up missing. But I guess they was like, we just send them. So we'll just send them somewhere else and send the check. Mm hmm. Yeah, they find some somebody else to take it. Mm hmm. Somebody else. Will take it. But this, I, I just, I don't know what I thought I was getting into watching this. But I just, it this was just so sickening. So you know, imagine. I'm just thinking. Imagine this is it's a small community. Uh, from what I'm understanding, I mean, it's in Baltimore, but everybody knows. Theory. So these police officers, and one of the girls that got molested, her father was a police officer. So a few of them, yeah, they were police officers, or they were related to police officers. So, <sighs> so these people who are involved in like this this sex ring are are in this community with these other people, and they're like raping their daughters. Right. So that, that so we were talking about that. Like you are raping and abusing people in your own community that look like you, that are related to people you know. You might go to the same parish as their families. Imagine what they were doing to us. Mm -hmm. Yep. People they didn't know on the other side of the tracks that you just picking up, click plucking off the street. Mm -hmm. That just that, that whole tie to John Hopkins just had me all riled up again because I was starting to think about Henry at Lax and then just the whole people they were kidnapping black folks back then and doing experiments on them i'm like oh my mm -hmm. god this is just too much over the weekend i was home and i was sitting around talking to my my um my cousin and my aunt and um i'm always just like a, a bystander to their conversation because they always talk about people i don't even know about but mm -hmm. they were talking about this couple that got they were that were getting married and he's a doctor and he's a pediatric surgeon but he now he wants to get out of doing surgeries and just go into research. And there's this company that um, is funded, partially funded by Madonna, and it's in Malawi. It's a research mm -hmm. company in Malawi in Africa, and that's what he wants to be a part of. And automatically, in my mind, I'm like, they're over there fucking these people up. Yep, you know it. They are fucking these people up. You already know it. That their research is drug, uh, drug interactions and all that stuff. Mm hmm. Man, it's a shame. Yeah. That was one of the episodes of Sensei. I think I, I, I'm not all the way caught up, but I have um watched a, a, probably another episode of Sensei since the last we talked, and mm -hmm. that was one of the. Have you started watching it yet? I started watching the first episode. I need to go back because I kind of um it was late, and that's something you have to really pay attention to. Yes. Um, I, I just know I saw somebody like a little girl or boy was walking through the woods or something. I was like, oh, 
Okay, this is gonna be okay. Scary. So yeah, you're not even that far along. But there was, a, a, it was like one the of the girl's scene. husband is um works for or owns a medical lab that does med medicine and research, and one of their um drugs is actually HIV, a AIDS drug, mm -hmm. and she's she's a tester she's like a scientist and she sees that the numbers aren't right she was like what you're giving out out here some of these drugs aren't really potent like they're just placebos mm -hmm. and he's like oh it's okay um, we're giving them to the third world countries anyway but the real ones the real ones we're selling on the market these are just the ones that we give away mm -hmm. but the thing is one of her best friends is in one of those third world countries and his mother has AIDS mm -hmm. so she was like you can't do that like she you know imparted on him like do you understand you're still affecting us like and then you know he finally got it but I was just like oh mm -hmm. again where it's all connected it's all connected yeah but even like when I posted about the keepers on my page, some of my mom's friends, they remember this. They were, my mom graduated in 72. My mm -hmm. high school is probably a mile and a half from Keo. Mm -hmm. So they remember the stories or some girls that ended up going to Keo or came to their school from Keo. And it was just like, mm -mm, that place wasn't right back then. So I think you said that you said one of your mom's friends went to Keo. Was she black or white? My mom went to all white school. Okay, mm -hmm. we were all white, or we both went to all white school because we went to the same high school. We, me, mm -hmm. me and my mom went to the same elementary, middle school, and high school. So almost like Keo, how it was generational, mm -hmm. and people had the same teachers. Me and my mom had the same teachers. Wow. In mm -hmm. school, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There would be times when that some teachers would call me my mom's name or my aunt's name, and I'm really like, you know. <laughs> because you do look just like your mom. That's true. I do. <laughs> you do. I do. So I'm pretty sure they probably were seeing your mom back in the day looking at you. And we did. When I look at pictures of her, like there are pictures that I have to look and be like, is that me or you? Mm -hmm. And then you have to close like, oh no, that's you. That's that. That's a 60s outfit. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that ain't me. That ain't me. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, the keepers really got me messed up. I'm finished watching it and I, I'm still like this will be a conversation for weeks, mm -hmm. months, years to come. I kind of want to go back. Like it's, it's so much information and so many stories that were happening. I want to kind of want to go back and watch it again, but it's like, do I want to watch it again? You know, I, I didn't, I didn't even want to watch it. Like I watched the first episode and I was like, I don't want to watch this anymore, but I was like, it has to have a silver lining. It has to end up getting better. Nope. Nope. The next, the, mm, sorry. <laughs> the motherfucker died. <laughs> right. I'm like this bastard and he was at Stella Mars that's where my grandmother is I'm like oh my god mm -hmm. I'm like oh I forgot Stella Mars was a Catholic uh I'm like oh my gosh I was like it's probably you can there's no telling how many priests they have up in there mm -hmm. they, they just shuffled up in there like oh well just put them in here hide them in here you know what I wanted to know is why is it uh I, I'm, I'm this happens in in a lot of those um Male dominated religions mm -hmm. um, that are almost like a cult where these priests and fathers and whatever they take advantage of these young girls and boys. But it seems as if there is a high concentration in Catholicism. I wonder why. I don't know. I think, it, like you said, it has something to do with that repression, mm -hmm. that, that repressing the, the urge and just making them seem like everything is wrong. That Catholic guilt. Mm -hmm. Like everything you do is wrong. Nothing can ever be right. So you just gotta, I don't know. Always be repenting your sins and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's, it's a mess. There's so much. And I, you know, when people, again, I don't want to get into these religions, but when people feel as if they have to go through another person to get to God, you tell you you lose all of your own power. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Agreed. There's there's, you know, there's no separation from you and the God or universe or whatever you believe in. There's you can go straight to that to that being. You don't have to go through somebody else because you don't know right. what that person is doing. You don't know what kind of mental right. state aura or whatever they have going on inside them. Any kind of demons they they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, intercessory is not for everybody. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So keeper, okay. yeah, that that has had my attention for the past couple of days. I'm gonna watch the, the last like 30 minutes of it and then I think I'm just gonna pack that away and just leave it be. Whatever information I, that I missed and skipped over, that's fine. I'll get it in conversation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I got you. Watch it. Because the people will still be talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. That's cool. all I've been watching. Um, one more thing. I think I've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. uh, Black and Sexy TV. I always feel like I want to shout I, them out. It's on what? I said it's. I always want to shout them out. I, the way I came across them is like a few years ago when I was um, I was in Virginia for some for some reason, and I was on Netflix just trying to find something to watch, and it was this show called. What a movie called it's a good day to be um black and sexy and it was a bunch of like little small short films um just dealing uh, concentrating on different aspects of sexuality um mm -hmm. so this company is a black owned company they're based in la and they have a whole production company that was on youtube it still is on youtube mm -hmm. and they have like some very quality shows that are written for you know it's black actors black writers producers Pretty much everyone was mm -hmm. black, um, but they have and they have their own uh, their own website now, Black and Sexy TV. It's like an online net TV network. Um, so I'm I'm watching them again. They have a new show out called What's a new season called Chef Julian. Hmm. And a lot of their shows have uh, characters that bounce from show to show, so all of their shows are kind of connected, but. I always want to shout them out because they have very good, they have good quality producing and, and writing and acting. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to shout them out. I love them. Black and Sexy TV. Black and Sexy TV, Black and Sexy dot TV. Can I watch them on any apps or is just on uh, their website? Or um, their website. You can, uh, I don't know if they have an app. They may have an app. Um, get them like on Netflix or Hulu or anything like that. No, it's just on their site. Okay. And they're all, they're also on YouTube, but the episodes will be on their um on YouTube and also on um their website, but on YouTube it's it's like a shortened version of the episode. Okay. And then on their site it's the extended full episode. Okay, so it's like a little teaser, but please come still visit our website. Yeah, yeah, cuz there it's okay. a subscription. It's only like 7 bucks a month. Um Okay. Subscription to it, but yeah. Pretty dope. I like them. I want to support them. So I'll figure out how to check them out. Yeah. So maybe I'll take my laptop with me tomorrow or this mm -hmm. weekend. Yeah. So anyway, anything else we want to chat about? Um, I don't think so. It, whatever it is, I can save it for next week if I think of something. Because I'm sure there's something I've watched that I forgot about, and then like as soon as I we hang up, I'll be like. <gasps> Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, so. All right. This concludes our I think this is our seventh episode. Woohoo. Yay. Our seventh episode. Thank you for tuning in. Um again, you can uh find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and now we're on iTunes. The Ben. See y'all next week. Peace. All right. Bye. Bye. Drop, drop it on a random.